Hello everybody and welcome back to this tutorial and what we are going to take a look at right now is the certain functions that allow us to convert the actual values from the certain variable into different type of values. Now we also took a look at something like that in the previous tutorial once we coded our first program but right now we're going to experiment a little bit more with it and we're also going to take a look at two different functions that we didn't cover. So first of all open up your idle right here. And we are going to use the Python interpreter for this program. We don't really want to write anything uh, to a file for now on. Uh, we want to take a look at these two functions first of all. So let us rewind ourselves with the actual string and integer function. So first of all, let's set a variable a to be equal to 3. So simple as that. We know that the a is the name of the variable and the 3 is the value that is stored in that variable. We also know that the 3 is an integer, so the value is integer in our variable a. Let me just see if I just type use this. As you can see, if you use a function called type, it will tell you what type of variable that is, as we can see, class integer. So we notice that our variable really indeed is integer. But for example, we know that the integer is an actual whole number, which means that it doesn't have a decimal value or point something behind it. In order to turn that into an actual float value, you can use a simple function called float. So in order to do that, we can just use something like this. So b will equal to float of a. Now what this will do is basically it will take the value from a and it will turn that into a float value. And the float value will be basically 3.0 or 3.000 depending on how many zeros you actually added to be stored in this variable as we can see right here. Currently it is only 3.0 we can use a type function in order to see what type of actual variable this is. So let us take a look at that as well. So type and then open bracket B, close bracket, we can see that the type of B is float. So we successfully converted the float, the A variable to be a float variable and also store that into a different variable. Nothing really to, to uh, hard to do but still it is something the more we learn the more we know so let us continue uh, and let us see what we can do with the string uh, function that we covered in the previous video so right now we currently have two different variables one of them is an integer and one of them is the float so let us check out right now whether we can make both of those uh, values to be equal to string so we can just type here a equals and we want to use a string from the a. That will be the first integer value as we saw right here which is the value 3 and if we just type here a you can see we now have the a or the 3 between the single quotes. We can try to do the same thing with the actual b variable so let us do something like that b equals string of b. Nothing we didn't get any error which is just type here b, we also get the actual string value of the b variable. In order to check it out, you can just type type b and it will say class string. So both a and both b right now are both strings, no longer integer and float. And that's how you can convert the values or the type of values one to another. Right now, let us take a look at another function, which is called the length function. What the length, fu length function it does is basically it shows you what is the length of a certain uh, either list or something like that. So let me just show you right here. If you just type here length a, it will say it is 1. Now the reason why it is 1, first of all, we know that currently, because we changed it, the a is now a string as we see right here. And the length of a will print out 1. Now you might be asking why is that? Well, basically because the length of the string that is stored in A, which is just 3, is equal to 1. There is only one character. If you just type here, for example, let's say like this, string equals hello. We know that the hello string has five letters. So if we just type here length of the string, you can see that we actually get the result of 5. 
Now this result right here is an integer value and it can be stored into a different variable. So for example, set equals length of string. Or we can use length of b right now. We know that the b is string 3.0. And if you just type here set, it, it is equal to 3. It is an integer value of 3. Now of course the good practice would be to not name it set or C or however you, pardon me, not set C or however you want to call it. It is best name to be to it is best practice to name it something like this. So length underscore of underscore B equals length of B. Uh, that is how you can actually keep a track of all of your variables. And right now you know what the actual length of B uh, variable is. While as once you actually had C, imagine you had thousands of variables, you would probably forget what C was for. So that's why it's a good practice to actually have variables named appropriately. And right now if we want to print length of B, underscore of underscore B, it will print out 3. Now this length is also used in the lists in order to, for example, count the number of elements in a certain list, but list is something that we'll cover later on. No need to worry about that at all. It is also used in some uh, for statements. Now for statements are also something that we will cover later on. Uh, basically, it has uh, it is widely used in Python 3, so this is not a function that you should just forget. It is also very helpful in many programs, so that's that as well. Now let's try to see whether the length will count the empty space also as a character. So you can see right here, if we just type here string underscore one equals open single quotes. And there we can just type here hello world, our usual string that we also always use. So press here enter. And if we just use the length of the actual string one, we should get printed out everything or the length of this actual string, including the empty space as well. As we can see, the hello has five letters, the empty has uh, one character, which is added to six and these five add to 11. So. So let me show you right now, if you, for example, set an integer, so a equals back to three, it is no longer a string. And if you just type here a length of a, you can see that you will get an error. That's because you can only use the length uh, on the strings and also on the lists. There is not, you can't really use it on a number because we don't really know what is a length of a three. For example, if you set a to be equal to 33 or 333, doesn't even matter, you would still get an error because the a is a number. It will not print out three as a result because it would, well, maybe by some logic it could print out three because there is three digits right here, but it doesn't work like that. You can see object of type integer has no length, which is correct. The integer number really hasn't, you don't know how to count its length. So that would be basically about it for these simple functions. Uh, what we learned right here is that we can actually turn specific variables into different variables. We can also check out the length of the uh, certain variables, strings, elements, lists, or however you want to call it. Now that is useful later on once you actually have a huge, for example, let's say you have a huge text right there and you want to check out how many characters are in that text. You of course won't go one by one character and count it by hand you will go and basically use length of that actual paragraph and count how many characters are in that paragraph, including the empty spaces, the special characters, and so on and so on. So, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, it was a rather short one, and we will continue coding in the next lecture. Bye.